people really underestimate their own power, but uh, there's a reason why they people spend billions of dollars manipulating public opinion and like divide and conquer strategies, getting people to fight with each other mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a bipartisan politics and stuff like that. And it's like because it matters. Like you have to, the mob has to be on your side in order to rule. Like if the mob turns against you, you're you're done. Like you're just it's over. Like. We see it happen with politicians all the time. Like a politician will get caught doing something and they'll all just turn on that person and throw them to the wolves and be like, you're done. Like sacrificed for harvest. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, yeah. I, I just think that there's, there's this balance there. There's this middle way there that HPD can really, really, really foster. And I, I think it's a great opportunity for us to act as that example. And, show other people how it can be done without having to have some revolution or some fighting or you know yeah well like you said it's all about collateral um just all about collateral and i'm really curious to see where the whole uh el salvador thing goes and michael saylor it's like remember when, when michael saylor was going to get liquidated everyone's like oh he's getting margin called like it's over like it's so over he deserves it like misery loves company like just just take all his money and now he's going to be like the world's first trillionaire and like what mm -hmm. happens if el salvador just decides to like take their bitcoin and like start printing a fiat currency out of it with bitcoin as like the collateral like i just can't even imagine that, what could happen that's exactly but that's exactly what i'm suggesting really that's almost exactly what i'm suggesting with the with the, the hpd bonds very similar thing it's like you could accept except i would argue that whatever liquid value you create on top of the hpd bond system is going to be way more stable and sound than anything you can put on Bitcoin, which which is volatile and varies and has high transaction fees and everything. Um, but definitely possible, definitely. But I don't see why it wouldn't work as long as as long as Bitcoin remains relatively non-volatile. But yeah, I definitely have to do my homework more on what v VSC can accomplish and Layer Two and Speak Network and all that stuff, mm -hmm. like. I'm sure, like, I just don't know what the limitations are, you know? I don't know enough. Mm. Well, it's exciting. Sometimes, like, Speak Network, for example, is set up in a way that it's just pure, entirely market-driven. So there's multiple facets to Speak Network. One is um, content delivery networks, so you can act as a content delivery network operator and distribute content to your local um, community. Or you can act as a, an encoder and encode videos through the network, or you can act as a storage node operator. And this, the encoder and the um, content delivery network, it's kind of hard to measure work because you could fake the throughput. So you could you can't really do a proof of work type thing there. But you can do a, a subscription type model where people can get paid by subscriptions or by donations or by some, you know, some kind of fee model where they can get people can get services or premium services. But with um, storage, you can do a proof of work or a proof of storage or what we call a proof of access. And so it means that basically the more, you know, if there's apps in the ecosystem that need to back up their files because they've got some important files or some important content they don't want to go missing, instead of doing that on Wasabi or AWS now, they can do that on the Hive community. Literally Hive community members are using their sp spare storage drives to store content um, on, on behalf of platforms or on behalf of people who want content storing. And as long as there's money going into that, as long as that's a valuable thing, which I think it ultimately is, uh, especially for, for video platforms where you do want to have some guarantee that if you get shut down, that, that some of your community's favorite videos are still online, but not on your servers. Um, this is a way to incentivize people to do that. So I, I would, you know, we, we will certainly be paying money into Speak Network to incentivize our community members to take part in storage of some of the videos on 3Speak. Um, and then any other platform can do that for any any important content that they've got. And it's like, well, what's the limitation? Well, it's it's just whatever the market decides. If there's not enough money going into the system, there'll be less, store, less backup storage going on. Um, if there's more money going into the system, there'll be more backup storage going on. The whole system's kind of set up in that way. Um, VSC, in terms of limitations, I mean, technically, I don't know. It, it, it could be huge because it's a layer two. I mean, and it's compartmentalized smart contracts. So each smart contract sets its own fee. They have multiple node operators. If they need to scale, they just get more node operators um, because the fees will be there. 
Um, what I was fascinated in was their ability to run a super sleek, like, light node that connects to Bitcoin, but only saves exactly what it needs to save for, mm. like, the contracts. That could be used for a lot of things. Yeah. Um, like, every Bitcoin hash, every 10 minutes on average or whatever, uh, is an unhackable set of infinite random numbers. Which is like, you can use that for a lot of stuff. And no one's using it. No one's mm. using Bitcoin. Like, everyone's like, oh, Bitcoin wastes energy. I was like, well, first of all, it doesn't. It creates a bunch of heat. Like, Which heat is useful. Use. Yeah, yeah. Heat, is, heat is useful. And, and more people, we're seeing more people like heat their pools with it and heat their greenhouses and stuff with Bitcoin miners, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but the random number generation is not being used. Uh, and it's just completely unhackable. You can't hack a Bitcoin block. You're not going to like throw away good Bitcoin blocks. You're going to take the quarter million dollars. It's like, too you're not. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to like. No, you're not going to throw those away. So, it's totally unhackable. Random numbers, like guaranteed, mm -hmm. um, which are I, which is actually very rare. Like if you look at how RNG works, like it's pretty hard. Like. The NSA knows. <laughs> they know what your random numbers are. You know what I mean? Like you, you gotta. Mm. And um, yeah, that's why people. That's why people say Satoshi must have worked for the, the NSA or whatever, because he chose like the one randomizer that doesn't have a back door. And it's like, hmm, is that an accident? Like he knew. Yeah. What do you think would be the some examples of applications for this? You'd like I mean, the most obvious one is like, like a lottery which would really make governments mad because governments make a lot of money off of the lottery. But if you could have these unhackable random numbers with like a lottery that's happening every 10 minutes, um, that's just gonna, you know, they, they can't compete with that. You could create a lottery that's like, you know, free to play. Like everyone has an equal chance of making their money back, which is not a thing that happens in gambling. Uh, you know, it's why yeah. when people get addicted the to gambling, their their life is ruined when they're addicted. They're just like yeah. done. Like there, you there just is, lost all your money. And... There is no house in these random number generators. If if the, if the base layer is neutral, there's no house. Yeah. So uh, another thing is gaming. Like we could create an RPG on the blockchain, and for really important RNGs, like say, really like because you know. Gaming is going to get to a level, especially with blockchain, where a rare item, someone might be willing to pay like a million dollars for that thing because crypto is insane, you know, like people were spending millions of dollars on crypto on, um, you know, punks on Ethereum. It's like, of course, if the NFT actually does something and is useful in like a game, they're going to be willing to spend millions of dollars on it. So um, you could use Bitcoin's RNG to ensure that that could never be hacked. You know, you don't have to use the platform that it's built on you could use bitcoin to be like no this is too important so we're going to use an unpackable bitcoin random number instead of from our network or whatever 